I want to talk to you all about something that has become an essential part of my college experience, thanks to the Moorhead King. It's something so simple that it's made up of just two elements, and yet something so complex that wars are fought over it. It's something so critical to life that we'll die if we go seven days without it, and yet we'll also die if we go three minutes with too much of it. It's, so, it's something so commonplace here in the US that we throw it on our yards, and yet something so precious in parts of the world that children miss school to wait in line for it. I'm here today to talk to you about water. I graduated from high school knowing that water falls from the sky and somehow ends up in my water bottle, and that was about as sophisticated as my water knowledge got. I took a class here my freshman year that challenged me to think about water in terms of how it plays into religious practices, economics, politics, and human rights. It was not, however, until I sat in this very room three years ago that I first began to consider how water could play a role in my life going forward. Dr. Greg Allgood, a UNC alum and the head of Procter & Gamble's Children's Safe Drinking Water Program, stood here and held up a bucket of dirty water that looked like this one. <laughs> Yummy, right? Um, <clears throat> Dr. Allgood said that none of us in this room would ever drink water that looked like this, but about 780 million people will drink water that looks like that today. And then he made a promise that I will now make to all of you. In 30 minutes, I will drink some of that water. I'm going to start the demonstration now, but before I begin, um, a little marketing campaign here for Procter & Gamble. Um, I want to tell you a little bit more about water in general. Humans can survive for between 40 and 120 days without food, but we can't go for seven days without water. I have no idea who approved a study like that to determine what those dates are, but we're just going to go with it anyway. Um, let's see. All right, so unsafe drinking water causes 4 billion cases of diarrhea each year, which results in 2.2 million deaths. Worldwide, that means a child dies every 15 seconds from water-related diseases. That means that 28 children are going to die during my speech today because they drink water that looks like this. And I'm going to take a <laughs> stroke. Let's see how this works. So why is a group of people that's two and a half times the population of the United States drinking water that looks like this every day? Scientifically, it's because there's fecal contamination in their water. 18% of the world's population defecates in the open and their waste runs off into drinking water supplies. You combine that with the waste contributed by livestock and the two million tons of industrial and agricultural waste that's intentionally deposited in our world's water systems every day, and it's a wonder that any of us can get off the toilet in the first place. <laughs> the economics associated with water quality are as incomprehensible as the lack of sanitation of the water. For every dollar invested in sanitation and drinking water quality, about $34 of economic development return is generated. Countries with access to clean water experience a growth rate that's 37 times those um, of, that, of those that don't. I'm no economics student, but that sounds like a pretty stellar investment to me. As a room of Moorhead Canes, you're all probably ready to start hearing about the solutions to these issues rather than the statistics. There are countless ways that we can treat water, ranging from the theoretically simple, but not terribly effective, such as boiling water, right up to the very complex, such as desalination. Today, I'm just showing you um, Procter & Gamble's uh, water purifier, because that's the demonstration that I first saw, and one that I've repeated in front of several thousand individuals in the past two years. And I'm really hoping it's going to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> So working with the CDC and the Water Institute, which is centered right here on UNC's campus, Dr. Greg Allgood developed this purifier that contains flocculant, coagulant, and disinfectant. And for those of you who haven't been spending much time in microbiology labs recently, that basically means that there is a water treatment plant inside this little packet that can purify 10 liters of water in 30 minutes. So as you can tell, all you have to do is pour this sachet into dirty water and stir. Um, then you filter it through a piece of old cloth, wait 20 minutes, and you drink safe, cold, clean water that will hopefully look like this. Procter & Gamble makes these sachets to distribute for free in developing countries in areas hurt by natural disasters. To date, P&G has distributed 4 billion liters of clean drinking water, translating to about 165 million days of disease that have been prevented. Thanks to the Moorhead Cane, I've had the opportunity to travel to Uganda for my international research summer to work with Procter & Gamble and their on-the-ground partner, Africare for 10 weeks. I traveled throughout rural villages in Uganda, where I would lead this demonstration for groups of women to teach them how to use the purifier and why it's important that they treat their water. 
I also led demonstrations at rural primary schools where my Moorhead travel companion and I would stand in front of hundreds of students and dance the hokey pokey while we were waiting for the water to settle. <laughs> Somehow shaking it all about seems to help us gain a little bit of credibility in the eyes of Ugandan students. I don't know how that works. Um, we helped Africa Uganda distribute about 20 million liters of clean water during that summer. Um, and then we also gathered suggestions for how they could improve the distribution of the next 20 million liters. One of our chief concerns was the unsustainability of the project, as well as the lack of a target audience. So I worked with AfriCare co-workers to analyze Ugandan demographics and supply chains to determine who the project should focus on and how the purifiers could reach these audiences most effectively. Upon returning to campus in the fall, I was able to use some Moorhead Cane Discovery funding to attend the largest water quality conference in the world, which is conveniently located two miles down the road at the Friday Center, where I met people who have made it their life goal to create a world in which everyone has access to safe water. One such individual was Mark Sabzi, the world's leading water microbiologist, who allowed me to join his research lab. I spent my junior year working to develop rapid assays to test water quality quickly in the field, as well as experimenting with bromine as a possible substitute for chlorine for water disinfection. When my private enterprise summer rolled around, the Moorhead Kane staff helped me find what has got to be the only for-profit um, venture in the US that's working to end diarrhea eradication. While wearing a business suit and sitting in their corporate DC and New York City offices, I worked with a consulting team from Accenture Development Partnerships to figure out how our client could eradicate childhood diarrhea in Guatemala. My boss worked remotely, which meant that I got an awful lot of strange looks as I would sit there on the phone and use words like diarrhea, deworming, and defecation-free zone instead of the usual debt, dividend, and default. <laughs> the result of the Moorhead Keynes Foundation support in allowing me to pursue this rather unconventional interest is twofold. The first is that it has allowed me to create a resume, which for me, has, um, or as one interview informed me a few weeks ago, makes it look like diarrhea is really my thing. <laughs> um, he was a Duke alum, so uh, that explains his lack of understanding of social works. The second thing is that, along with everything else that the foundation has done for me, the Moorhead Cane has helped me realize that water issues are not only something that I want to be involved with for the rest of my life, but also something that I want to share um, with others in terms of appreciating that celebration of water. So while I think that Moorhead Canes in general are exceptionally good at seeing the glass is half full, I hope that you all take a moment this weekend to celebrate what it is that fills up your metaphorical glass, be that water as it is for me, or another opportunity that the Moorhead Cane has provided that allows you two to feel full. So, cheers. Okay.